23 minutes past four now and a small team of student interns from the University of of Southampton have uh, led a project to put together home activity packs for children in low-income families. It's for those who may have struggled to access online learning during school closures throughout the pandemic. Well, one of the team, uh, Holly Smeaton, joins me on the line to tell us a little bit more. Uh, Holly, afternoon. What inspired this idea then? Hi, thanks so much for having me. Um, so the project started kind of just over a year ago when schools had to make the move to online learning. Um, and with that kind of shift in the learning environment, we could see that a lot of students were actually really struggling to engage with online work. Um, so we were seeing some really worrying gaps in terms of who had things like internet access, you know, devices like laptops, even just a stable home life, um, you know, like all things that are actually really important for young people to take part in online learning. Um, and we wanted to kind of level the playing field a bit and hopefully re-engage some of those young people that were really struggling with lockdown. Um, so we decided to in these you know, self-contained activity packs that don't really require any resources or any internet connection on the part of young people and um, covering all sorts of subjects to kind of engage them and really remind them that learning can be fun and interactive and just give them something a bit different and exciting to do in a really hard year. So, so describe the packs to me then, what did you guess in one? Um, so there's a lot of different packs at the moment that have been sent out um, and they're all kind of standalone covering a whole range of subjects and age groups. So for instance, with one pack we've had secondary school students working as detectives to solve a fictional crime um, and they've been learning about all kinds of like different scientific methods in the process. So for that one they get um, all kinds of fun stuff like cocoa powder and paintbrushes and tape to do fingerprinting. Um, and magnifying glasses, things like that. Um, and then there's packs for primary school ages that are a bit broader. So our art packs have lots of different art and craft materials, um, inspiration for kids to get creative, or we have outdoor learning kits that are just all about getting kids out, exploring all the green spaces Southampton has to offer. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, none of them need internet connection. If students need basic stationery or equipment, that's also all included for them. Um, along with all the sort of cooler stuff that they need for activities, so like magnifying glasses, art supplies, even, you know, pine cones and bamboo sticks to make on <laughs> hotels, just all sorts of cool stuff for them. Sounds fantastic. I think I might want one of those. Is that, how many children are you you're hoping to reach then with these packs? Um, so when we started last year, we sort of distributed about 2,500, um, which we were really proud of. Um, and then we saw such a really amazing response from the community that this year we've actually managed to get over 14,000 more out so far. Um, and we're hoping to get that number up to about 18,000 by the end of the summer. Wow. So you, your plan is to keep this going then. Have, have you thought sort of longer term than the end of the summer? Yeah. So I think the thing that's really great is that while the packs were kind of initially a response to lockdown, they've actually proved to be like really, really versatile. Um, so we've seen them kind of used beyond lockdown, like inside and outside of the classroom. You know, we've had charities that work with young people use them as the basis for activity days, um, or they've sent kids home with them in between meetings to keep them entertained. Um, schools have been using them as summer holiday projects, or they've sent them out to students who've had to self-isolate. Um, so it's been really amazing seeing how they've kind of evolved in the community. So I think we're just really excited to see how they've been used in the future so we've got lots of new packs kind of on the horizon um so yeah i guess watch this space yeah it sounds like you're doing a brilliant job i know, I know things have been busy for you aside from this as well you've just graduated how was how was the last sort of year and a bit been for you just on a very personal level um i mean it's been obviously sort of mm -hmm. difficult because we've also been making the move to online learning you know in our degrees as well um myself and josette the other intern who's um, been leading on this project. She's also just graduated too. Um, and I think it's been really great sort of working with other students. Like there's a whole team of student interns at the university. Um, and I think that's what's been really great about the whole project is sort of being able to connect with people from the university or other courses, other degrees, um, and have that really sort of supportive team behind us. So it's actually been a really great year. And I think last summer, especially with the first lockdown, it really, um, gave me a lot of sort of purpose when a lot of people were just kind of not really sure what to do with their time.
So I really actually enjoyed it. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Sounds like you've done some brilliant stuff. Uh, Holly, thank you so much for talking to me uh, this afternoon. Holly Smeaton, who is one of the people behind those uh, online, uh, uh, not the online, they're um, uh, activity packs for uh, youngsters. And if you want to find out more, actually give us a ring and we can pass on all the details. Uh, BBC Radio Sun, 12.30.